Okay. Um, welcome everybody. My name is Ricardo. I'm a, I'm a student from Mexico and I'm currently living here in Turkey. So today I will give you this small introduction to Spanish language. So uh, my company is called Spanish for Your Future, Introductions for Spanish. And today I will be teaching you some basic expressions for your daily life, how to have basic conversations and things you can use to start learning Spanish. Or if you are ever planning to go to Spain or Latin America, these things are going to be really useful for you. I'm going to get a bit of help in Turkish, but I think I can do a basic introduction. Merhaba, ben Imadin Ricardo, ben Mexicali Yabanji Rejim, Burda Yashiro, ve Espanol Jaretmenim. Bu benim sitesin, Spanish for your future. Begum ben sitesin, Espanol Jaretmen Olujem. And I'm going to need some help for later. Today I'm going to teach you uh, some basic expressions in Spanish, some basic conversational skills for Spanish. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move on. And first of all, thank you everybody for coming. Okay. So I want to welcome all of you, first of all. And this is how I say it, bienvenido. Bienvenido, this means welcome. Welcome to our first Spanish conversation public speech. Bienvenido, okay. is it venido or ve? Bienvenido, yes. The advantage that we have is that when it comes to reading in Spanish, almost all the letters are very similar to Turkish. The vowels A, E, I, O, U. The B, the V, bienvenido. So it's going to be really easy for you to read. We have a couple of exceptions. And as we go to them, you will see. It's quite easy, to be honest. So okay. we, can, we can repeat after you, right? Bienvenido. Bienvenido. Yes. I'm going to say some things. You repeat after me. So first of mm -hmm. all, allow me to introduce myself. OK. So when it comes to introducing yourself, this is the way you do it in Spanish. I'm going to do it for me, and then I'm going to teach you how to do it for you. Ricardo Buenrostro. This is me, Profesor Ricardo Buenrostro. Me llamo Ricardo. Me llamo Ricardo. This means my name is Ricardo. Soy de México. Soy de México. I am from Mexico. Tengo 27 años. Tengo 27 años. I'm 27 years old. I'm going to give you the numbers so you can give your own age. Don't worry too much about it. <laughs> and this is basically what I do, my profession. Soy profesor de español y estudio cinematografía. Soy profesor de español y estudio cinematografía. I am a Spanish professor and I study cinematography. Okay, this is my introduction. My name is Ricardo. I am from Mexico. I am 27 years old and I'm a Spanish teacher and cinematographic student. Okay, but what can you do if you want to introduce yourself? Well, there is a very simple formula that you can see in here. Introducing yourself in Spanish. First of all, we have me llamo. Me llamo is basically what you say in Spanish for your name. My name is, and then you give your name. You can say me llamo eh, Melig, me llamo Maria, me llamo Estra, me llamo Eduardo, whatever your name is. Then we have soy de. Soy de means I am from. This is when you give your nationality. Okay. This is when you give your nationality. And basically, the only thing you need to add after this is your country. For example, for example, yo soy de México. Uh, in the case of some of you, soy de Turquía. Soy de Turquía. 
look i'm gonna have some notes in here and for the ones you want you can send me an email after the conversation and i'm going to send you the transcript turquia is the way we say turkey in spanish for the country for example you can say soy de alemania this will be germany soy de españa this will be spain you simply add your country right after this expression. Okay. And what about the third line? Tengo number años. In Spanish, we don't say I am 27 years old. We say I have 27 years. I have 27 years. In Turkish, it can make sense if you say a higher team, a year me yedi yilvar. My life has 27 years. So, tengo, por ejemplo, yo tengo 27 años. I am 27 years old. When I show you the numbers, you will understand how to say your own age. Okay? And this is the case for a lot of you. It's going to be soy estudiante. Soy estudiante, I am a student. Okay, now let's go back to something in here. When you talk about your profession or what you do, estudiante is a very common one, but let's imagine you work in something. You start by saying soy and then <laughs> your profession. Okay, what could you have in here? Soy ingeniero, this would be a engineer, engineer, you can say, for example, soy a doctor, this would be doctor, quite easy. You can say, soy vendedor, this would be seller. If you are a seller or if you work in selling department of a company, soy vendedor, you could say, soy maestro, this means teacher. This will be, for example, my case. Yo soy maestro de español. I am a teacher. Okay, soy profesora. Yeah, I can see in the chat that we have someone says soy profesora. That's perfect. Soy profesor o profesora. Profesora will be for the woman, profesor for the men. I am a professor. Muy bien, muchas gracias. Okay, soy profesor o profesora. And whatever is your job. Muy bien. Let's go back to the presentation. <clears throat> okay, what do we have in here? Numeros. Okay, as you may imagine, numeros are numbers in Spanish. I'm going to go through this quickly. I'm going to say it. You can repeat for yourself. So read with me. Uno. Dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Okay, these are the basic numbers in Spanish and the basic you will need for the rest. Okay, I suppose none of you will have ages in here. So let's jump to bigger numbers. Some of you yes. might be in this range. Mm -hmm. So if you're a teenager or a young adult, your age is going to be around here. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. Now, one little fun fact about Spanish. The numbers between 11 and 20 are a bit tricky because they have a very unique name. The numbers from 20 until the rest, most of them are going to be based on the basic numbers. You will see why. Okay, so this, if your age is around here. About if your age is over 20, which is my case, as you know, 27, 27. Look at how to say 20. 20. 20, this means 20. And then if you remember the numbers in the first slide, we are going to combine the word 20 with one 
20 with 2. 21, 22, 23. We are going to mix the sounds. And they're going to look like this. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, y 20. 30, this will be 30. Okay. I will not go through all the numbers because it will take a lot of time. But if you want, I'm going to send you a paper later in the end of the presentation with the numbers up to 100. If somebody here goes to there, I'm quite impressed. Okay, now this is something you will need all the time. You will need it today. You will need it ever if you need to go to a Spanish speaking country or if you know. Que significa? Que significa means what does it mean? Nedemek. If there is something you don't understand, you come and ask to your friend or someone, que significa? Nedemek. What does it mean? And they will explain. Remember this, I'm going to use it today quite a lot. Okay, let's move on. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Okay, very common and basic expressions in Spanish. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Okay, you can read them, okay? And now you can ask yourself, ¿qué significa? Okay, you can guide yourself by the picture in here. Buenos dias means good morning. Buenas tardes means good afternoon. Buenas noches means good evening or good night. We have a fun fact about Spanish. We don't have four ways to talk about the day, like in English or Turkish. Good morning, afternoon, evening, and night. We only have three. Buenos dias is for the morning. Buenas tardes is after 12 until it becomes dark. Buenas noches is at whatever time it gets dark. For example, in winter, it can be dark at 6 or 6 a.m., 6 p.m., for example. It's already dark. So at 6 p.m., you can say buenas noches because it's dark. Noche means night. Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Teacher, just to be clear, günaydın, buenos días. Günaydın. Mm -hmm. İyi öğlenler, tünaydın, buenos tardes, yes. iyi akşamlar, and iyi geceler, buenos, buenas noches. Buenas noches, exactly. Buenos días, iyi günler, buenas tardes, iyi... Eh, öğlen. Öğlen, iyi Afternoon. öğlen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or iyi gün, kind of. Mm -hmm. Buenas noches, y akşamlar, or y geceler. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. For example, what time is it? Is 4.12. So I can tell to all of you right now, buenas tardes, bienvenidos. If you remember in the beginning, bienvenidos. So these three sentences are very common when you open a conversation or when you're talking to people. Is the very first thing you say. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Let's move forward. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you how to have very basic conversations in Spanish. We have these two friends in here. Let's call them Pablo and Arnoldo. So Pablo comes and says, Hola, ¿cómo estás? No, try to repeat it for yourself after me. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Arnold will reply. Muy bien, gracias. ¿Y tú? Muy bien, gracias. ¿Y tú? Back to Pablo. Muy bien. Remember this conversation. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, gracias. ¿Y tú? Muy bien. Ok. Ahora, you might be wondering... ¿Qué significa? You remember? ¿Qué significa? What does it mean? So let's see this conversation. Hola. Hola significa hello. Hola, hello. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? How are you? Muy bien. Very good. Muy bien. 
Very good. Y tú, and you, y tú, and you. You can reply with the same. Muy bien, gracias. Gracias means thank you. Okay. Now, let's imagine, I really hope it's not the case, but let's imagine you don't exactly feel good. How else could you say it? Okay. So we have the question. ¿Cómo estás? Meaning, how are you? As you remember. How can you reply to it? Bien. This will be the word for good. Bien. You can say mal. Mal means bad. In the case you're not having a good day, you feel sad or tired, you could say bad. And I really hope it's not your case because I want you to be having a good day. What if it's something neutral, something in between? It's like shoile boile in Turkish. How could you say it in Spanish? We have a funny way to do it. Más o menos. Más o menos. ¿Qué significa? What does it mean? More or less. Like so, so, shoile boile. Fena deil. Eh. Fena deil. Neste, fena deil. Something eh. like that. Más o menos is the literal way that we say it in Spanish. It means more or less. Okay. So I hope all of you are good. Now, something you can apply to this, but before is muy. Muy in this case will mean very. Muy bien. For example, yo estoy muy bien. I am very good. I'm very happy and motivated. Muy mal. Very bad. I don't know. You're having a bad day. You're really stressed. Something you can say muy mal. Because I know it happens. I mean, it happens sometimes. Okay. What do we have next? <clears throat> Por favor, please. This is a very important sentence. <laughs> okay, I'm using the picture of the cat because it's really, really easy to remember. You can have a cat with a very cute face in, please. It's a way to rem remember, por favor. Okay, now I'm just gonna show you quickly in the paper. These three expressions that always go together. Eh, por favor, this means please. Gracias, as you remember, means thank you. And if you want to say you're welcome, because you always have it in the same context, we say de nada. This means you're welcome. Okay, let's continue then. Me gusta. Okay, now let's start using actual daily expressions, actual things that we will need. Me gusta, okay? It's very clear in the picture. Me gusta. ¿Qué significa me gusta? ¿Qué te gusta? I'm going to oh. read here for all of us together. Me I gusta like. Means I like. Yes, yeah. thank you so much. Me gusta means I like. De nada. Gracias. Uh -huh. yeah, this is exactly how you use it. Very good. As you're paying attention. Me gusta. Okay. What if I come to you and ask you, ¿qué te gusta? ¿Qué te gusta? Okay. ¿Qué significa que te gusta? ¿Qué te gusta? Means... What do you like? Mm, gracias. What do you like? What do you like? Okay. I'm glad for the participations. ¿Qué te gusta? What do you like? If you ever travel, if you meet someone, or you need to use this in a context to talk about yourself, or if they ask you what activity you want to do or what would you like to do, they might ask you this. ¿Qué te gusta? How do we use this one? The general rule is we say, me gusta, and then a verb. Me gusta. De... Verbo, verbo, me gusta plus feel. Or, me gustan, and then a noun. I'm going to show you how to use it for verbs in this case. For example, me gusta comer, me gusta salir al parque. 
Me gusta dormir. Me gusta escuchar música. I'm going to repeat it one more time and then I will explain. Me gusta comer. Me gusta salir al parque. Me gusta dormir. Me gusta escuchar música. ¿Qué significa? Me gusta salir al parque. This means I like going out to the park. Salir is our verb for going out. Chicmac. Me gusta comer. Everybody likes to eat. I love eating. So you say me gusta comer. If you ever travel to a Spanish speaking country and they ask you, ¿Qué te gusta? Me gusta comer. They will show you the best places to eat. So remember this when it might be important. Me gusta dormir. What do I love to do when I have free time? Me gusta dormir. I think we all love doing this. It feels so comfortable. Me gusta dormir means I like to sleep. Or another common free time activity. Me gusta escuchar música. Me gusta escuchar música. I like listening to music. So remember, ¿qué te gusta? What do you like? Me gusta escuchar música. That's what you reply. Okay. Let's Professor, uh -huh. ¿qué significa kahve ichmek? Drink coffee. Kahve ichmek, okay. How can I say? Vamos a ver. Me gusta tomar café. Drink coffee. Okay, thank you for the question. So if, for example, you like drinking something, tomar is our verb for drink. Café, that's coffee. Me gusta tomar café. I like drinking coffee. In my case, for example, me gusta tomar té. I love tea. Drink tea. Me gusta tomar té. Or in the case that, for example, you want to use the noun version of it, you can say, me gusta el café. I like coffee. Me gusta el té turco. I like Turkish tea. Me gusta, so, me gusta uh, tomar café. Me gusta tomar café. This is drinking tea. Mm -hmm. Me gusta el café. In this case, you're talking about the concept of coffee, like the noun for coffee. I like coffee. Muy bien. Now, besides things that you like, there are going to be things that you want. Now, quiero. Quiero is very important. ¿Qué significa? Quiero want. means I want. Want. Gracias. Gracias. Quiero means I want. Okay. So again, if you ever need something, if you're traveling to another country or you're communicating with people, uh, you want to express what do you want. Of course, that's very important. So they will ask you this question. ¿Qué quieres? ¿Qué quieres? What do you want? ¿Qué quieres? Por ejemplo, it's going to have the same structure as me gusta, the same structure as I like. Quiero hablar español. Quiero comer una ensalada. Quiero viajar a España. Quiero ser tu amigo. ¿Ok? Ahora, ¿qué significa? ¿Qué quieres? Quiero hablar español. This means I want to speak Spanish. Quiero hablar español. Quiero comer una ensalada. I want to eat a salad. Quiero comer una ensalada. I think this one in particular is important if you are in a Spanish speaking country or with Spanish speaking friends. Everybody loves eating. Me gusta comer. So I want to eat something. So I'm going to come to my friends and tell them, quiero comer. Mm -hmm. It can be, quiero comer uh, pasta, quiero comer pizza, quiero comer una ensalada, quiero comer kebab, whatever you like. ¿Qué quieres? Quiero viajar a España. Quiero viajar a España. I want to travel to Spain. Quiero ser tu amigo. Quiero ser tu amigo. I want to be your friend. This is something you can use. As a foreigner, when you go to another country, you can meet people like that. You come, you introduce yourself, I show you in the beginning. Me llamo Ricardo, soy de México, quiero ser tu amigo. Want to be your friend. 
Spanish speakers from basically anywhere are very, very friendly. Believe me, you can really make good friends with us. Let's continue. Now, let's imagine you're trying to apply this to a real life context. For example, what if you ever encounter this situation? Quiero un café. Quiero un café. I want a coffee. Why? Me gusta el café. Me gusta tomar café. Eh, o sea, man, quiero un café. Okay. How could you go to a coffee shop and get your coffee? You're going to have a dialogue like this. Let's start on the right side. Buenas tardes. Like I mentioned, a good opening uh, conversation opening. Buenas tardes. Me da un café, por favor. ¿Qué significa por favor? Please, as you remember. Claro, con leche o sin leche. Claro. Con leche o sin leche. Back to this. Con leche. Aquí tiene. Muchas gracias. Ok. Ahora, ¿qué significa? Let's see this dialogue. Me da un café. If you remember the opening, we know that. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Me da un café. Could you give me coffee? Claro. Claro means of course. The translation actually is clear. It's like, it's clear, I understand, of course. Claro. Con leche o sin leche. Con leche means with milk or sin leche. Sin leche means without milk. Because some people like, like a strong coffee, some people like milky coffees. Yo, me gusta el café con leche. That's my personal choice. I like my milky coffee. Aquí tiene. Aquí tiene, this is what was in Spanish to mean, here you have it. There you go, buirun. Aquí tiene. It's a very polite way to give something to someone. Okay. Let's try to apply something similar in a context like this. En el restaurante. In the restaurant. Okay. So let me go back a bit, show you the sentence that we had in here. ¿Qué quieres? ¿Qué quieres? What do you want? Okay, this is technically an informal way to say it. When someone asks you that, there is a formal way to say it. For example, if you're the customer in a restaurant, it's going to look like this. ¿Qué quiere comer? ¿Qué quiere comer? What do you want to eat in a formal way? So you sit in a restaurant and they ask you, ¿Qué quiere? What do you want in the formal way? What do you want? ¿Qué quiere? And as you remember, we can have a verb after that, comer. What do you want to eat? Okay. So you might encounter a conversation like this. Again, you're going to start the conversation with um, a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Buenas tardes, good afternoon. Quiero ordenar una paella, por favor. Quiero ordenar una paella, por favor. Claro, ¿qué quiere para beber? Un zumo de naranja. A la orden. Claro, ¿qué quiere para beber? Un zumo de naranja. A la orden. Ok. Ahora, now, ¿qué significa? Quiero ordenar. So in this case, I have two verbs. I want to order. Quiero ordenar. So when you have this, uh, everything you want to order is simply going to come after. Quiero ordenar uh, pizza. Quiero ordenar spaghetti. Quiero ordenar sopa. Sopa significa soup. Quiero ordenar uh, papa para francesa. Rice. Whatever you want. Quiero ordenar. Now, if the waiter asks you, ¿Qué quiere para tomar? If you remember, ¿qué quiere? What do you want? Para tomar means for drinking. This is what they always ask you right after you order your food. ¿Qué quiere para tomar? What do you want for drinking? You can say jugo de naranja. For example, that's one of my personal favorites. Quiero jugo de naranja. I want to run juice. Quiero limonada. It can be a lemonade. Whatever you want. A la orden. 
a la orden is what they sometimes tell you when they meet right away or at your order. When you give an order, they tell you a la orden, say right away. Okay, let's move on. And of course, because it's a very common thing that I love in English. When they come to you and serve your meal, this is what we say, buen provecho, buen provecho. This is basically um, a afietolson. Or enjoy your meal will be the English equivalent. It's like afietolson in Turkish. They give your meal. Now, let me explain a little fun fact about Spanish because I know this is different in Turkey. When we say buen provecho, we only say it before we eat, not after. Because I know that in Turkey, you can, after your meal, they tell you a fitolskun. In Spanish, doesn't work like that. It's always before eating. It's like, I'm wishing you will have a good meal. So it's always before the dinner. Buen provecho. Muy bien. Moving on. Oh, by the way, if you notice, you might have wondered, what was he ordering? Buenas tardes. Quiero ordenar una... Paella, por favor. Paella, in this case, this is our dish. ¿Qué significa paella? Paella is this. Platillo típico español. Platillo típico. Platillo típico means traditional dish. Platillo típico español. This is basically paella. It's a mixture of a chicken, a rice, some vegetables, spices, shrimps, lemon. It's very delicious. Honestly, it's very delicious. I've tried once. And the funny thing is that when people make this, they make it in huge, huge pots. I have literally seen like three meter long pots full of this. It's a big Spanish tradition. Paella, very traditional Spanish dish. Okay. Now, Expresiones, expressions. Okay, now that you have some basic uh, conversation starters, opening, how to order maybe coffee, a drink, or a meal, what about random expressions that you might encounter in your daily life? I'm gonna show you some. Expresiones. Okay, how are you? If you remember in the beginning, when we say how are you, we say como estas? is the basic expression, but we have other ways to say it. I'm gonna read, now listen to me. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Qué pasa? ¿Cómo va todo? ¿Qué tal? Basically, the others are kind of like a way to say what's up. Is officially informal, but in the real life, you are gonna hear it in all the contexts. You're gonna hear it in the school, in your job. There are very common ways in Spanish to say, how are you? How is it going? What's happening? Or what's up? ¿Qué pasa? ¿Cómo va todo? ¿Cómo va todo? How is everything going? ¿Qué tal? What's up? This is when you come to someone and you want to say, how are you? What's up? For example, I come to you. Eh, Hola, María. ¿Qué pasa? This means, hello, María. How are you? Okay. Now, this is something in the middle of the conversation. If you follow me on Instagram, you will see that I have one specific slide for this. Vamos. Vamos, I love asking this expression in all the languages. It means let's go. Vamos is what we used to say, let's go. You're with your friends, you have an idea, you want to do something, or you simply want to say something that motivates you to go do it. You say vamos, or you might say, que esperas? ¿Qué esperas? ¿Qué significa? What do you wait? Exactly. What do you wait? But the way we understand it, it is what are you waiting wait. for? Yes, thank you. And as I mentioned, vamos means let's go. Vamos. ¿Qué esperas? These two expressions might come together actually. For example, let's imagine you want to travel. So you say, vamos a viajar, ¿qué esperas? Let's go travel, what are you waiting for? 
or you can have this, for example, vamos a aprender español. Let's learn Spanish. This one sounds like an invitation to learn Spanish or I'm encouraging you, motivating you to go and learn Spanish. Vamos a aprender español. O, ¿qué esperas para aprender español? What are you waiting for to learn Spanish? ¿Qué esperas? Don't wait anymore. If you follow me on Instagram, you're going to see this picture in here. I'm explaining how to use the verb vamos, a, plus verb. In Spanish, we use this to invite someone to do something. It's the English equivalent of let's do it. So if you're gathering with friends, you're doing things or that, and you want to propose an idea, to invite something or to suggest to go and do something, you say vamos a, and whatever you want. Imagine, for example, you're in a party or in a nice event, you can come to someone and say, vamos a bailar. Let's dance. For the people who like dancing and being energetic, you can come to someone and say, vamos a bailar. Let's dance. Again. Next. What about goodbye? Expressions for goodbye. Again, adios. This will be the basic if you know some Spanish. Adios. But of course, we have more. Now, listen with me, and then I will explain. Adios. Nos vemos. Hasta pronto. Hasta la vista. Cuídate. Okay. ¿Qué significa? Adios is the basic for goodbye. Nos vemos. This will be see you. Gurushurus. Nos vemos. Hasta pronto. Hasta pronto is see you soon. Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista. It might sound familiar to you because this is a very famous quote from the movie Terminator. Terminator comes and says, hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la vista is see you, but it, it's kind of in a way that see you never. It's like, this is the last goodbye because when the Terminator comes, he's going to exterminate you. He's never going to see you again after you're dead. Hasta la vista. It's like, Never, like the definite ultimate goodbye. Or if you want to be more polite than Terminator, cuídate. Cuídate que significa take care of yourself. Que endinei back. Muy bien. Now, we are coming close to the end of the Spanish class or the Spanish speech. And I want to say this to you and you might be able to understand it. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Hasta pronto, as you're remembering here. Hasta pronto means see you soon. Tengan un buen día. Tengan un buen día. Means have a nice day. This is a very polite way to wish someone have a nice day. Tengan un buen día. Have a nice day. Okay. So I want Gracias. to thank you all for coming and joining my class. Muchas gracias a vosotros. Gracias. Thank you for you. Muchas gracias. Mm -hmm. Muchas uh, gracias. Of course, thank you.